Well, today, God, as we come to this service this morning, God, to worship you, Lord. God, we just pray, God, you accept our praise this morning. God, we lift our hearts and our hands to you today. Oh, God, to worship you, Lord, for who you are, or for what you've done, for what you're going to do, or for all things this morning. We give you glory, honor, and praise. God, we ask that you have your will and your way to be done in this house this morning. Let your spirit, God, move and thank the Lord. Let your power be real in every situation today, God. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, God. I pray this morning you break every chain, God, that you set every soul free. God, if there's one this morning, God, oh, this morning, God, to set up a battle today, Lord, let your spirit be real today. Touch your church, Lord, strengthen us today. Encourage us, God. Just lift yourself this morning above the shadow of the light, Lord, to worship you in spirit and in truth today. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Not our will, but your will be done to you, God. In the name of Jesus today. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Turn around and look at your neighbor and tell them it's good to have them in church this morning. Amen. Give him the worship of this praise team today. Amen. This is a good day to be in the Lord's house.
some of those pieces are lost. You may think this morning that there's parts that are lost, but God knows where every piece of your life is. Amen. He can mold them back together and make it exactly what he wants it to be.
They were singing the song before this one about the broken pieces. Y'all heard the nursery rhyme about Humpty Dumpty, right? Humpty Dumpty sat on the wall. Humpty Dumpty had a great fall. All the king's horses, all the king's men couldn't put him back together again. Preached a message on that out of David years ago. Amen. The king may not have couldn't put, a, put all those pieces back because of the brokenness is the actual meaning behind that little rhyme that sometimes things are getting so broken that it seems that they can't be fixed. But I know the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And there's nothing that he can't fix or nothing that he can't put back together. Amen. He is still in control today. Amen. Ladies can take these kids to Children's Church. Sister Wendy's got nursery this morning. I mean, keep your mind on the Lord this morning. Does not matter what your life looks like today. God can put it all back together. Amen. He can put it all back together. I want to talk to you for just a few minutes this morning from John chapter 11. Spraying this week and we just had a tremendous service Wednesday night. The Spirit of the Lord was in this place. Done some great things, I believe, in, in this house. I know we did. Even then, God was dealing with me for the service this morning. And I want to preach to you from a very familiar story, but it's going to be a little different twist. John chapter 11 is the story of Lazarus. If I was to have a title this morning, it would simply be sometimes you have to bury Lazarus. Sometimes you have to bury Lazarus. Then John chapter 11, verse number 1 says, Now a certain man was sick, named Lazarus of Bethany, the town of Mary and her, and her, her sister Martha. And it was that Mary which anointed the Lord with ointment and wiped his feet with her hair whose brother Lazarus was sick. Therefore his sister sent unto him, saying, Lord, notice this, Behold, he whom thou lovest is sick. And when Jesus heard this, he said, The sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, that the Son of God might be glorified thereby. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. Listen to verse 6. This is kind of contradictory. He, it already said that he loved him and he was close to him. And it reiterated again in verse 5 that he loved Mary and Martha and Lazarus. But verse 6 said, And when he had therefore heard that he was sick, he abode two days still in the same place where he was. Don't make a whole lot of sense, does it? Go to verse number 17 of that same chapter. It said, then Jesus came and found that he, had, that he had lain in the grave four days already. When he arrived, he found that he had been laid in the grave for four days. May the Lord add his blessings to his word. You can be seated this morning. Going to be kind of an unusual turn or an unusual spin from this story, but God began to deal with me about this scripture and about this sermon for this morning. I talked to Brother Aaron last night. I believe God is wanting to do some great things in this service this morning. The Spirit of God is real and in this place this morning. If you are a Christian in this house this morning, amen, if you have ever prayed before, I want you to be praying this morning that God's will be done in this house. Sometimes you have to bury Lazarus. This is a very familiar story of Lazarus and Mary and Martha, and, and we read the first few verses of that. Jesus was in Bethany, and, 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 and they had sent word unto him that Lazarus was sick. Verse number four, Jesus makes a statement. He said, this sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, 
that the Son of God might be glorified thereby. Amen. The sickness is not unto death and of corruption, but God will permit a temporary death so that the glory of God can be manifest by a resurrection. Amen. This was the message that Jesus sent back to Mary and Martha. There was a messenger that came and said, Lord, Lazarus is sick. We need you to come. And he sent the message back and said, this sickness uh, is not unto death, but that those, but that God might get glory from this situation. Uh, verse number six that we read said that he abode uh, in the same place uh, two more days. Uh, you read on over in a little bit, and I'm going to go from, from, from a place to place in this scripture for the sake of time and put it all together this morning. You'll find in this scripture, amen, when you read on over a little bit later, that when the messenger was sent back to Mary and Martha, amen, when Jesus said the sickness is not unto death, you will find that by the time the messenger arrived back to where Mary and Martha was, Lazarus was dead. Lazarus was dead. I've read this and preached this a lot of times. And, and, and all week this week, God was dealing with me. And I began to look at this and piece all this back together. The same day that the messenger was sent, Lazarus died. But Jesus is sending a message that said this sickness uh, is not under death. Seems mighty contradictory. Uh, amen. Mary and Martha, his best friends. This is the one that took the, uh, the ointment and busted that bottle uh, and uh, anointed his feet and dried it uh, with her hair. This was special people. Uh, and no doubt Jesus wanted to do everything he can uh, for this family. Uh, but for some reason, uh, he is still two days of uh, abiding in the same place uh, where he was. Uh, he was 18 miles uh, from where Lazarus was. Uh, 18 miles uh, is the only thing that separated, uh, amen, Jesus uh, from Lazarus. Uh, amen, Do you will see, uh, amen, this was a tip. <laughs> Me, a temporary death uh, that was allowed by God uh, but it was not a death uh, unto corruption. Uh, amen. I want you to stop uh, with me for just a minute uh, and I want to talk to you about that. Uh, amen. There are things in life uh, that will happen to you. Uh, there are things in life uh, that will happen uh, in your everyday experience. Uh, amen. That will cause uh, you problems. Uh, that will cause you pain. Uh, amen. Ultimately, uh, if you're not careful, it will cause, amen, a spiritual death. At times, we get in situations that looks like it could even be a physical death, amen. But God will allow things to happen in your life, and God will allow things to happen in my life to bring me to a place, to bring me to an understanding of my need for him, amen. They could no doctor, amen, help Lazarus. There could no no psychiatrist help Lazarus. Amen. They were in a place that only Jesus could help. And they sent him a message this morning. I want to tell you if you're sitting on these pews this morning. Amen. There's already been messages sent up. Amen. At 4 o'clock this morning I was laying in my bed and the Spirit of the Lord was beginning to move over my heart. Amen. I already said God knew this morning you were going to be here. Amen. The prayers of have already been up. Messages have already been sent that there's somebody, there's some of us in this room this morning amen, that undoubtedly need help. Come Things come in your life that cause you pain, that cause you trouble, but it doesn't have to be a permanent thing. It doesn't have to be a permanent death. Jesus abode there for two more days. Go on through verse 7, through verse 15. Amen. The conversation goes on. Amen. Between Jesus and his disciples. Jesus gets up. Said, let us now go into Judea again. And his disciples said, Master, if you go there, they're going to try to kill you. You go on through the scripture. Jesus said, we've got to go that we might wake our friend Lazarus because he's sleeping. Peter said, Lord, if he sleeps, he He'll do all right if he's just asleep. And Jesus said, no, Lazarus is dead. Amen. Well, Lord, why are we going if he's dead? 
If the situation is final, why are we going? Lord, if the situation in Lazarus' life has already got to that point, uh, amen, that it's over, uh, Brother Kyle, uh, and he's dead, uh, amen, why aren't we going to go? Uh, they wanted you to come when he could be healed, uh, but now he's dead, uh, amen, and, knew, uh, and now you want to go where he was, uh, amen, sometimes uh, in our little, little feeble mind, uh, we look at a situation uh, in our arm and uh, our heart, uh, amen, and sometimes it may seem uh, that it's hopeless, uh, sometimes it may seem that there is no use. Amen. Lazarus is dead. And now Jesus is beginning to walk toward where he was. But little did they know that God was waiting. Amen. He could have healed him and he would have got a healing. But there were a lot of people that's got a healing before. But God didn't want an ordinary miracle for Lazarus. He wanted Lazarus to experience something that nobody had ever experienced. I mean, he could have had an ordinary healing on day one. Jesus could have spoke the word and told that messenger, you go back, and when you get back, he'll be healed. And he would have been. But he let Lazarus die. He let Lazarus die. Let me tell somebody in this room this morning. Just because it seems like it's dead, just because it seems like it's hopeless, uh, doesn't mean that it is. Uh, just because it seems like uh, that there is no solution, uh, does not mean uh, that there is no solution. Uh, just like it looks like uh, that is final uh, and it's done. Uh, amen. It is not always uh, final uh, and said and done. Uh, we used to sing a song. Uh, amen. Karen Peck put it out. Uh, said the facts may uh, be stacked up against you right now, uh, but the truth is uh, that God's on your side. If the facts look one way, that doesn't mean that's the way it has to be. If the facts say one thing, that doesn't mean that's the final answer. Because God is still in control and he can change it all and make every situation to be turned around. Just because Lazarus is dead doesn't mean that it's over. Amen. Verse 17, it said he got to where he was. Jesus arrived to where Lazarus was and found out that he was had been buried. And when he found out that Lazarus was buried four days ago. I titled this message, sometimes you have to bury Lazarus. The last thing Mary and Martha wanted to do was to bury their brother. The last thing they wanted to do was have a funeral. The last thing they wanted to do, Brother Corey, was to say goodbye. The last thing. But sometimes in life, there comes a situation where you just have to do whatever you have to do. Sometimes in life, you run up on situations that you don't have the answer to. Sometimes you run up on situations uh, where you don't have the solution to. You run up on things that you don't understand and you don't know and you don't know how to handle them. Uh, so all you can do is what you can do. They called for Jesus to come, but he, for some reason, he didn't come. Sometimes you just have to bury Lazarus. What's to you? To you today that are sitting in this room, what is in your life that is important to you? What is in your life that is the most important thing to you? What if that's that thing that is most important in your life? What if you get to the point or you got to the point where Mary and Martha was and the very thing that you love the most seemed to be taken away from you? You're not going to shout with me for a few minutes, but if you'll hang on, we'll get back. Amen. Just because they didn't want to have a service, but they did. They Sometimes you have to bury Lazarus. Amen. Sometimes we have sicknesses in our life. Amen. Sometimes there are situations in our life that come up. Amen. Not only was Lazarus, I want you to listen to me very carefully. Not only did they bury Lazarus, but they buried Lazarus' sickness. Not only did they bury Lazarus, but they buried the problem that caused the death. 
Sometimes what God is wanting us to do is to come to an old-fashioned altar and bury ourselves and give ourselves and give all that we are. Because when we bury ourselves and we give all that we are and we die to Him on the cross, it is not only us that is dying, but it is our sicknesses and our diseases and our addictions and our problems and our situations. Yes, they had to have a funeral. Yes, they had to lay him in a tomb, but that was not the end because a miracle was coming and God was saying, oh, not only did you lay him down, but you laid down what caused the problem. Oh, God help me this morning. There are some of you sitting in this room this morning. There are things in your life that are causing you a lot of heartache. There are things in your life that are causing you a lot of sickness and a lot of trouble and a lot of family problems and a lot of things that are going on in your everyday life. There are things, Brother Kyle, that will cause us, amen, to not sleep at night. There are things that will cause us, amen, to lose our relationship with God. There are things that will cause us to lose our peace and our joy and our happiness. And sometimes God has to the drastic measures to get rid of those things out of my life. Amen. There's a man that I talk to quite regularly. He used to be in one of the churches that I pastored. And I talked to him on the phone. And he's gotten out. Don't go to church anymore. Goes here, goes there. And every time I get him on the phone, I tell him, don't ever forget that God loves you too much to let you go. He don't talk to me much anymore. Makes him uncomfortable. Amen. Sometimes I call him just to make him uncomfortable. That's just how kind of mean fella I am. Amen. I tell him, God loves you too much to let you go. There's some folks in this room, God loves you too much, and God has saw you go through too much, and God has saw you deal with too much, amen, that he's to the point that he's extending his arms and his hands, and he's trying to help you, and you feel like it's hopeless, you feel like your life is over, you feel like death has creeped in, and there's no use to keep going, but let me tell you one more time, it is not the end. The facts may look one way, but the end is not there yet. They buried him. Four days later, Jesus walks up. <laughs> he got some nerve, don't he? Man. But Herbert, he got some nerve. Verse 19. And many of the Jews came to Martha and Mary to comfort him them concerning their brother. And Martha, as soon as she heard Jesus was coming, went and met him, and Mary stayed at the house. And Martha said, Lord, if you'd been here, my brother would not have died. Lord, I'm going to in, 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 interpret that in Christian language. Jesus, I thought you loved us. I thought you cared. I thought that when we called you, you would come right then and heal him and everything would have been all right. And if you'd have done it my way, Lazarus wouldn't be dead. That's the way we are. We want to pray. We want to say, God, I want you to do this, 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 and this. I want you to save this one. I want you to heal this one. And this is how I want you to do it. Sometimes that is not God's way. Sometimes God's not going to do it the way I want it to be done. Because I'm here to tell you this morning, sometimes it takes a death. And I'm not talking about a literal, a, a, in Lazarus' case, it, it was a physical death. Sometimes you have to hit rock bottom to be helped. Sometimes you have to be to the bottom. You have to be down to the last resource and nobody can help you. And then you can turn and look around. Sometimes, uh, hey, sometimes I've got, hey, I've got, I've got two boys. 
And I would do anything in this world for them. And sometimes it just drives me insane. Some of the things that happens. And I keep saying, God, you got to do this and you got to do that. And God keeps saying, remember my promise to you? Amen. Amen. Remember my promise to you? <coughs> and then he'll remind me, I don't need you to tell me how. That's right. Amen. I'm sitting here every day saying, it's going to be today. 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 This is going to happen today. This is going to happen today. And it just ain't happened today yet. Because I got it in my mind how God's going to do it. And, 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 and so did Martha. Amen. Lord, if you've been here, if you've been here, there are some of you this morning that made this morning. The devil's got you convinced that God don't love you. The devil's got you convinced that there's no hope. The devil's got you convinced, uh, amen, that you're worthless uh, and that you're hopeless uh, and that there is no help for you. But let me tell you this morning, uh, amen, as long as there's breath, there's hope. Uh, amen, as long uh, as God is in, in control, there is hope. Now let me go back and share a little story. Just because you think like that this morning, that's because the devil whispers that in your ear. Don't think you're any different than anybody else. My dear old daddy is 80, will be 86 years old in a few days. And there's been times that I went and sat down with him, and his mind is not what it used to be. And the devil will sit on his shoulder and will tell him, and he has looked at me, and he said, I feel like I am as worthless as anybody that's ever been. You know where that came from? That came from the enemy. I have heard that man that's been a pastor and a preacher longer than I've been alive talk things in his mind because the enemy had got a hold of his mind and his heart and had begun to talk in his ear and had told him, you're no good, you're not worthy. Amen. Listen to me, a man that has preached more messages than I'll ever preach and seen more people saved than I could ever dream to. The devil had him convinced that he wasn't even worthy to be saved anymore. But one morning he stepped up to that altar and reminded the devil, I'm not here in my worthiness no way. I'm not nothing outside of the grace of God. But by God's grace, I am what I am. You're not alone. You're not the only one. We're all going through the same thing. God help me this morning. We're all going through the same things. Uh, enemy ever sat on your shoulder son and said if God loved you you wouldn't be going through this if God loved you why you been so sick if God loved you why you having all these problems if God loved you why would you have to be split open down the middle of your chest huh don't think you're the only one Martha said well we thought you loved us if you'd have just came and killed her, he wouldn't have died. Go on with the rest of that scripture. She said, Lord, if you'd been here, my brother wouldn't have died. Verse number 23, Jesus said, Thy brother will rise again. Martha said, I know he shall rise again in that resurrection at that day. And Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection. I am the life. He that believeth through, the, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever believeth and, and, and whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believe you this? Amen. Do you believe this morning? Do you believe that he is the resurrection and the life? Amen. Yes. Do you believe that even though the, all the statistics say that it's hopeless? Huh? Don't mean that it's hopeless. A young man that Brother Kyle been requested prayer for down in Florida, that preacher down there, they gave up on him. They said he was hopeless. They said he wouldn't live. Guess what? God said different. Yes. Amen. God said different. God said different. 
I talked to people. I talked to a guy not long ago. Amen. That looked at me in my eye and said, there is no medical reason that I am here today. The doctor said I should be dead. The doctor said there was no hope for me. And he looked back at the doctor and said, I don't need a medical reason why I'm here. I'm here because God said he was not done with me. And I'm here to tell you, the Lord helped me this morning. I'm here to tell somebody in this room this morning, I don't care where you've been or what you've done or what you've been through. He's not done with you yet. He's looking for you. He's coming after you. And he's not going to give up until he gets you. Lord have mercy. Ah, you're the boss the I said he's looking for you. Four o'clock this morning, he was looking for me. You believe it, Martha? Do you believe it? She said, "Yea, Lord, I believe that you are the Christ." When when he had said unto her, he went and she went her way. And he called, he called Mary, her sister. And as soon as she heard it, she came quickly. Mary was hurt. Mary, just Colette was hurt. Martha ran out. They were tight. You study this out. They were tight. When Jesus went by, he was in their home. Martha ran to meet him. And Mary stayed inside. You ever been hurt before? Huh? You don't want to go talk. You don't want to talk to nobody. You don't want to see nobody. You want to stay in your shell. And then you don't trust. Oh, God help me this morning. Church, Lord, we pray for me. You ain't seen me preach like this in a while. You stay up in your little shell. Because it's hard to trust when you've been hurt. It's hard to trust when you've been talked about. It's hard to love. When you've been let down. Amen. Yes. Mary wouldn't even go where Jesus was. Martha ran out there, but Mary stayed. And Jesus said, and said, tell Mary to come here. And Mary ran out to where he was. And she fell down. And she said, Lord, I don't understand. If you've been here. If you've been here. Lord, why'd you let that happen? Why did you let them hurt me? Why did you let them talk about me? God, I was doing my best. I was doing all I knew to do, Lord. Why? Why, Sister Diane mentioned this. I believe in something. We want to ask this. Teach children, we want to ask why. You ever look to God and say, Lord, why? Why? Mary said, wow, she was hurt. Her heart was broke. She thought he had let her down because her brother was dead. And she had to bury him. I'm going to tell you again, to see the glory of God, sometimes you've got to bury laughers. Sometimes the thing you love the most you're going to have to bury it. Huh? Now I'm going to turn it around the rest of this service and we're going to talk in the spirit. So we're talking now about burying things spiritually. Sometimes to get better, you got to bury it. Sometimes to get away from it, you got to bury it. Sometimes to never see it again, you got to bury it. Because if I see it again, it reminds me. If I see it again, it pulls me. If I look at it again, it's drawing me again. That's why you got to bury it. Shut the ball. Jesus. Jesus looked at Martha. And he basically, I'm going to go, I'm going to go on through the rest of that scripture. Amen. But it said, then when Mary was come to Jesus, she saw him, fell down on his feet and said, Lord, have you been here? My brother had not died. Listen at this verse. But when Jesus therefore saw her weeping and the Jews weeping, he came, that which came with her, he groaned in his spirit. 
he groaned in his spirit. He was moved. Her broken heart, her situation moved him. It moved him two different ways. He was troubled. He was troubled. But you dig into that word, it means he was angered. He wasn't angered because Mary and Martha asked why. He was angered because there was still a power that had a hold of his friend. But there, there was still a power. Even though he was present, it still had him. And he groaned within himself. He groaned within himself because the power of Satan and death had over his friend. Jesus was standing, listen to me very carefully, Jesus was standing right now having a confrontation with Satan and death. He was about to he was about to confront what made him groan. He was about to confront what made him angry. The power. The power. The power. There are things in this world that we're not careful will take control of your heart, your soul, and your mind. Amen. I don't care if you're a Christian in this building and you've been saved for 40 years. If you're not careful, there's a spirit that will latch on to you. I've been dealing with a friend of mine that's been, that's, that's been preaching for a long time. But there is something that has came over him. And I have dealt and prayed and saw there is a spirit that has just latched on. Spirit of control. Got to have it. Gotta have this, gotta have that, gotta have this, gotta have that. I said all that to say this. You don't think that Christian people battled the same thing? Amen. This was Jesus' friend. And death had control of him. And Jesus is walking up and he sees the bond that, the, the, that, that, that Satan has over Lazarus' life. And he is groaning and he knows there's about to be a confrontation. A confrontation. Let me tell somebody in this room this morning uh, from the front to the back. Uh, this morning when you got up, uh, there was a confrontation uh, over your life. Uh, amen. The enemy would have loved nothing more uh, than for you to stay home uh, and you not to came. Uh, he would love nothing more uh, for you to give up uh, and give in. Uh, he would love nothing more uh, for you to turn around uh, and never come back again. Uh, there's a confrontation. Uh, there's a tug of war. Uh, there's a battle uh, for your soul every single day, but I'm here to tell you that the one that's standing, that's groaning this morning is the one that's already won the keys to death, hell, and the grave. He is the victor, and you will bring victory to your life. Amen. He's standing there. They're weeping. Brother Norman, he's moved. My old, my baby boy. I asked him one time, is you going to preach for me tonight? He said, yep, it won't take long. He said, what do you mean? He said, if I ever get to preach, I'm going to preach Jesus with me. I said, you know, you can take that and preach along. You can't anything else, huh? He said, oh, that's a short scripture. I said, but that ain't a short message. Amen. Jesus wept. He was moved with anger, with compassion. And he was moved with love. He was moved with love. But Ross, you know why I'm here today? Because he was moved with love toward me. When I had failed flat on my face, when I had made so many wrong choices and wrong decisions that he should have just thumped my little head off and said, I'm done with you. But Brennan, he didn't. Because his love is greater than my faults. His grace is greater 
the night. Jesus was moved. And he went with them. And he looked at Mary and Martha and said, I know you had to bury him. I know you had to bury Lazarus. But now I just need to know where you laid him. Where, where have you laid him? That's about another two hours worth of preaching right there. There's a lot of things in your life that God would love to help you with. But you know what he is? He is a gentleman. He's not going to bust his way into your heart. He's not going to pry his way into your life. He's not going to force you to do one thing. He's not going to force you into anything. But what he will do is bring you to a place. He will bring you to the bottom. Amen. So you will turn and look at him and say, Lord, this is what I need from you today. Amen. Whatever is in your life today, he is asking you one thing this morning. He is asking you, what have you got? Where is it? What do you need me to do? It? He said, Lazarus, where is he? Where is he? And they said, Lazarus, he said, where have you laid him? And they said unto him, come and see. Jesus said, behold. And that's when he began to, to weep. And the Jews said, oh, how he loved them. Let's go back to Mary and Martha just a minute. Can you imagine? After he didn't come, after Lazarus was dead, after they had to bury him, now he's going to cry. Yeah. The Jews said, oh, look how much she loved him. Mary and Martha's probably saying, wait a minute. If you look deep enough into this story, there's a whole lot of stuff. There's a whole lot of stuff. And at any point, Mary and Martha could have said, but Lord, Remember, you, you could have been here. You were only 18 miles away. That was one day's walk. You could have gotten here before he died. Jesus said, where have you laid him? And they said, Mary and Martha, they carried him out there. And, 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 they, and Jesus said, roll away. Roll away the stone. When they had a funeral and they put a body in there, they would put a stone over that door to keep Varmints out and to keep people out and, and, and all those different things. And, and they had a, a stone over that. And Jesus said, roll away. But, and Mary and Martha said, Lord, he's been dead for four days. For four days. He said, there was a reason that Jesus had to wait four days. The Jewish custom, they believed that after you died, your spirit roamed about looking for your body to come back to life. They believe that any time in that three-day period that a body could just take on breath again and live again. But on the fourth day, the rich had begun to decompose. And on the fourth day, on the fourth day, there was no hope. For any more life. But remember what I told you in the beginning. Jesus allowed a death. But not a corruption. There was no decomposition. That began to happen. <laughs> because life was coming. Even on the fourth day. Even on the day. When there seemed to be no hope. The fourth day. And they look and said. Why, why do you. Why do you want to know where it is Lord. He's been there four days. By now he stinks. I almost titled this message, Stuff That Stinks. Amen. But Kyle, there's some things in my life that I've hung on to for so long that they stink. There's a lifestyle that we say, that sometimes we try to live that it just plain stinks. Amen. It, 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 it's not doing us no good. It's not bringing us any good. It's not bringing us any gain. And, 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 and you know what? I thought I could do it my way. Amen. I, this, this is my life. I'll live it like I want to. I was raised on a church pew. And I said when I get 18, I'll go to church if I want to. If I don't, I won't. It's my life. I'll do it my way. 
That's where we are sometimes. It doesn't matter how bad our lives think. It doesn't matter how much trouble we get in. It doesn't matter how many problems that we have. We'll just keep on going down the same road and doing it over and over and over again. How long is it going to take before we realize that we need a change? How long are we going to take before we realize that we need a deliverance, that we need a health, that we need a heart change and a mind change? Lord, he's been there so long now he stinks. He stinks. Jesus didn't care because he knew. But Rich, he wasn't going to stink. Amen. A miraculous thing that already happened but that nobody even knew about. Jesus walked up to that tomb. He didn't say, hey, you, come out. He walked up to that tomb and he said, Lazarus, come forth. You know why he had to say, I won't, I won't preach. You know why he had to say Lazarus? He had to be specific. Because if he had just said, come forth. <laughs> hey, Brother Rich, I ain't going to get into that. But there's about a whole lot of people coming out of a whole lot of different places. But he said, Lazarus, come forth. There was a day that I was sitting on. That little church pew downtown. Raised in church all my life. Just as lost as a goose in Detroit. Sat on the church pew. Heard my daddy preach. Played the trumpet in the choir. Done everything I knew to do. Except for get right. And there came a day. That he called my name. There came a day, a couple of years later, that he called my name again. Standing in front of the, of the remembrance table in that same little church with my hands up and I was worshiping and I was thinking everything was good and God was, and I heard my name again. And he said, son, today you're going to get in or you're going to get out. And I said, what, Lord? He said, you know I've called you. You knew it for a long time. Today is the day. Lazarus, come forth. Are you in this room this morning? Is he calling your name? Or are there some things in your life that you need to bring and bury it? Remember when I told you when he buried Lazarus, he also buried his sickness. If you'll come down to this altar and, and you'll turn everything over to God and you'll give him your life and you fall into this altar and you bury your life in him, your sin and your heartaches and your troubles and your past and everything will be dead with it also and you can have a brand new life. This morning he's calling you. He's calling you. Lazarus, come forth. And the Bible said that he that was bound on the inside, he could walk him up to that door, bound in his grave clothes. And Jesus said, loose him and let him go. Sometimes you got to bury Lazarus. Because when Jesus done the resurrection, when he was resurrected, guess what didn't come back with him? The sickness didn't come. The sickness died. But Lazarus was given branded life. Amen. Karen Peck and New River sang a song titled, The Tomb Wasn't Empty. It was full of my sin. Huh? When he died on that cross, in your place, in my place, but there they laid him in that tomb on that third. When he died on that cross, my sin died with him. Your sins died with him. And on the third day when he rose, Diane's sin didn't come out either. 
They stayed in the tomb. They're still, where are they today? They're still dead. They're still dead. Sometimes you have to bury Lazarus if you're going to have the resurrection and be different. Sometimes it's the thing that you love the most. Sometimes it's the thing that's the hardest to give up. I preached this message out in Haven to a church full of people that I believe with all of my heart. That was every, I looked that morning and I'm like, God, why in the world did you give me this message? I looked around before I started preaching in the crowd. I looked around and I thought, Lord, if I know these people, every one of them in this building are saved. God, why did you give me a message like this? And I got to the end of that message. And there was a lady that I would have never dreamed in a million years stood up and began to weep her way to an altar. And she came and fell down in that altar on her face and tears began to flow. And she began to pray, God, I've got to kill it. It's got to die. I can't carry it one more day. That lady stood up out of that altar and went across the room and got another lady by the neck and said, I need you to forgive me. I've been sitting in church with you all these months and I've had hard feelings against you and I can't have it one more day. She said, it had to die today. We had revival, folks. Because once that lady began to move, it was other people that began to hit the altar that, that, that began to say, you know what? Maybe there are some things I need to die. Maybe there are some things that I need to leave in the altar. Maybe there are some things that I need. Some, 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 some. We see, you see, we've all got the three. We've all got the three H's. We've all got hurts. We've all been hurt. Sometimes we need to bury that hurt. We've all got habits. Amen. We've all got habits. We think about a lot of habits. We think about drugs and alcohol and, and, and pornography and all, all different kind of things in the world today. And, and we think that's the only habits that they are. No, it ain't. There's a lot of people today, amen, they got a, amen, they're, they're, they're so jealous of the neighbor. Amen. They got so much anger, so much bitterness. Amen. It's just become a way of life. They don't even realize that they can never be all that God wants them to be until they bury that in the altar. All oh, got hurts and we've all got had. And folks, we've all got hang-ups. None of us are perfect. Every one of us from that point, from up there all the way to the back, we've all got a past. Every single one of us, we've got a past. You know what? If I sat down with you and I told you mine, I'd have to hang my head because I'm not proud of a lot of decisions I've made. And I probably wouldn't be the only one. If we went around this room, we'd all probably say, there's some things I wish I could do differently. But you know what? I can't change yesterday. But Ross, I can't fix my past. But the one thing I can do is I can make up my mind that I refuse to let the past dictate my future. I'm going to say that again. Your past does not have to dictate your future. Amen. You can bury it in an altar and have a resurrection in your heart. And you can live a brand new way. I use a word around here, justified. <laughs> you can live your life just as if it never happened. But Barry, you don't know. I don't need to know. You don't know mine either. And if he can justify me, he can surely justify you. If he can save me, surely he can save you. If he can forgive me, he can surely forgive you. If he can make me 
to what little bit you see standing up here this morning, there ain't no telling what he could do for you. You may not be as hard-headed as me. God has to work hard on me. What about you this morning? What about you this morning? Amen. Hallelujah. You got to let him in. You got to let him in, folks. You got to be willing to say, God, I need you. You got to be willing to come buried in an altar and say, God, today, I'm not going home with this. I challenge you this morning all over this building with every head bowed, every eye closed, stand with me all over this room. I know this was a little different and it didn't go off. It didn't go at any way like I had planned or like I envisioned it being. But I wonder this morning, no one looking around but myself and the Lord. Maybe.